This is where the lasers are. This is not like lasers in the movies. Let me give you an idea of the scale of this place. There are two lasers here, one on each side, and they're each pulsing 10 petawatts. It's just amazing. When we think of lasers nowadays, we think of eye surgery and light shows and the stuff of science fiction. But we don't tend to think of lasers as providing answers to our understanding of everything. I'm Dr. Shinny Somara and I'm at the École Polytechnique in Paris to meet a Nobel Prize winning physicist whose research on lasers is helping to unravel the secrets of the universe. Professor Gerard Maru won the Nobel Prize with his student Donna Strickland because of his work on lasers. Why is it so important to understand lasers? Well, light is really, uh, of course, you know, very an ingredient of our lifetime. I mean, without light, there is no life. We still don't know how light propagates. You know, the light propagates in vacuum, and it's not like sound. The sound doesn't propagate in vacuum. And a vacuum is a building block, you know, of what you are. Sound can't travel through space or a vacuum because it needs to vibrate the particles it moves through. There are so few particles in space that this rocket creates no sound. Yet light can mysteriously travel through nothing. Lasers are highly orderly forms of light, and by firing a laser beam into a vacuum, scientists may have a chance of solving this mystery. But in order to do this, they need vast amounts of power. We got a Nobel Prize with my student Donna Strickland because we came up with a way that we could amplify pulses to extremely high peak power. I mean, the type of power is typically a thousand times the power of all the power plants in the world. The pressure from our laser, when we focus all this power on a teeny tiny spot, you know, is enormous, humongous, like Type of pressure will be something like 10 million Eiffel Tower on the tip of your fingers. But the power is very short. And this is a trick we are using to get this phenomenal power by producing this energy over an extremely short amount of time. To understand that, we need to remind ourselves about the difference between energy and power. Power is a function of energy divided by time. This is the insight that earned Professor Maru and Donna Strickland a Nobel Prize, that we can use small amounts of energy to deliver vast amounts of power if we deliver that energy over very, very small amounts of time. This insight and the work that followed led Professor Maru to initiate the creation of three major laser facilities across Eastern Europe. Collectively, they're known as the Extreme Light Infrastructure Project, or ELI, with installations in the Czech Republic, Hungary, and ELI nuclear physics just outside of Bucharest in Romania, which, when complete, will be home to the world's most powerful laser. Professor Nikolai Zamfir is its director. So a typical laser pointer is how many watts? Yeah, probably there's you know, one watt per yeah. Yeah. Fraction? Yeah, fraction of a watt, yeah. How so many watts is here? One million billions of watts. So that's 100,000 million, million a hundred watt light bulbs. Correct. Here, the power is delivered in a very short time, which is 10 uh, millions of a billions of a second, which is 10 femtoseconds. 
I didn't even learn about the femtosecond at school. Correct. <laughs> so this is a new invention. So all of that power in fractions upon fractions of seconds happens right here. here. Yeah. So that is where the magic happens. The extreme light infrastructure nuclear physics is a 33,000 square meter complex dedicated to the use of lasers in the study of nuclear physics. It's a kind of particle accelerator that will use the immense power of its lasers to conduct experiments formerly only possible in facilities like the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. All accelerators are based on electromagnets, huge electromagnets which generate particles with high energy. Yeah? If we can replace these big electromagnets with laser, we'll, we'll change our way to accelerate particles. It will be much cheaper and more effective instead to pour money in concrete, like a 27 kilometers large tunnel. So we don't spend billions of uh, euros or uh, what, dollars or uh, Swiss francs on radio protection on a huge scale. The head of the high power laser system is Dr. Ian Dankus. Ian, what's it like working here? It's very exciting. You have to do all this cutting edge science. You are working with all these very high level technological tools. But in the same time, you are working with a team which is very high level. So you are all the time in a challenge of questioning and trying to find answers. You have the best people around you to work with and to ask them questions. So I'm about to head into a clean scientific laboratory. I've got, I'm standing on sticky pads, which is gonna collect the dust because any kind of filaments in the room could scatter the laser. It's that precise. So I'm gonna have to uh, get suited up. So I'm going over to the clean side. So where are we going now? We are going into the laser room. Okay. Where we have the high power laser system. What's all this? These are for uh, safety reasons. So no laser light can escape to this corridor. Wow, so laser can even come through the doors? Yes. This is where the lasers are. This is not like lasers in the movies. Let me give you an idea of the scale of this place. There are two lasers here, one on each side, and they're each pulsing 10 petawatts. It's just amazing. Everything is happening in vacuum. So all these other pipes which are metallic and all these vessels which are metallic are vacuumed out. So all the air is taken out. Otherwise, the light is so intense that you will produce something that we call filamentation. So there are sparks in the air like in, uh, like in a thunderstorm. And that's why we had to be kitted out like this to make sure that we're not bringing additional particles into the space. Exactly. The ground on which we are walking on, it's a special floor, specially designed for us to be able to walk without disturbing the laser. You can see that the laser is sitting on a floor which is lower and we are walking on a false floor which is decoupled completely from this in order for us to be able to jump here and nothing is happening on the laser. So the laser will never feel our steps? No. Everything is starting with a small pulse. Then that small pulse is amplified through these amplification arms. These parts here are lasers which are pumping the amplification crystals. So actually we are using laser to produce another laser. So you're adding more lasers to the initial laser pulse? Yeah. It almost looks like, you know, in the movies, usually the, the bad guy just tried to find the big crystal and put some lasers on it and they will produce a laser beam. It's almost the same. We have these lasers which are pumping a crystal 
and in that crystal we amplify our main laser beam. But one more step is required to achieve peak power. So the laser which is produced inside these boxes is traveling towards this equipment here which is compressing the beam into that small disk of light that I was talking about. The laser which is coming out, is, it's a disk of light of half a meter diameter and the thickness smaller than the thickness of a sheet of paper. We can produce one petawatt at repetition rate of one pulse per second and 100 terawatt, which is 0.1 petawatt, at a repetition rate of 10 pulses per second. And this is very important when you do science, which requires a lot of statistics. So you are looking for an event for which the probability to happen is very low. Then you need a lot of pulses. So basically it's key to be able to keep doing the same experiment over and over exactly, and over again. Exactly. All of these powerful laser experiments will generate a lot of radiation. Wow, so much concrete in here. Yeah, actually it is. We need a lot of concrete, we need very thick shielding in order to shield us from the radiations produced during the interaction of the high power laser pulse with matter. We produce a lot of types of radiation from X-ray, gamma rays, accelerated electrons, protons and neutrons and they can penetrate very thick amount of materials. So in order to shield us, we need very thick shielding. So what's this? This is the door of one of the experimental areas. After we are sure that nobody is inside and we have several systems in order to be sure of that, we can close the doors and after this, after we take this key off, the experiment can begin. A 100 terawatt beam may enable new methods for high-resolution medical imaging using laser-based X-ray sources. One petawatt pulses fired at gas or thin foil targets will demonstrate new imaging methods for industry. Later experiments could also influence the nuclear energy industry by using the lasers to expand on earlier research that reduced the half-life of radioactive particles. We can radically shorten the time, you know, of this radioactivity, you know, from millions of years to years. And another experiment will target the vacuum itself, searching for the elusive particles of dark matter and dark energy, which make up 95% of the universe. You know, we could, in fact, recreate what's going on in cosmos, in stars, in black holes. And what will that tell us? Everything, you know of what you are and where we are coming from and where we are going. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.